from DC to start the month to um, Anaheim for their conference, the um, California conference last week, the Missouri conference. This is what I do. This is my passion. This is what I love. And I have to give kudos to your leadership there. Um, Matt is absolutely fabulous that he is thinking about safety for his members. So often in this business, I have to struggle to get anyone to pay attention to safety. And most of the time it only occurs after something happens. So kudos to your leadership, Matt there. And thank you to Brittany uh, for your role. But safety is so important. And when leadership values it, everyone else gets it. So a high five uh, to your leaders. I interviewed a um, Colorado Bureau of Investigations crime expert. I said, I speak to thousands of real estate agents. What message do you want me to give them? She said, tell them that you are the target. Cyber criminals are coming for you. They're coming for the consumer and the consumer's information. But don't worry, my job is to tell you how to prevent that. In other words, she is saying, take it seriously. Take your role, your responsibility in protecting the consumer, as well as making your home every night seriously. Brittany already did the introductions. In addition to hosting the company's only real estate safety podcast, I get to write for the leading industry publications, Inman, The Close, Realtor Magazine, RIS Media. So if you've read about safety at some point, you have encountered me. So I am happy to be here face to face with you all today, virtually, but still here. A lot of times agents say, where are we supposed to go for information? How do we find out what's going on um, regarding crimes in the real estate industry? There was no central place, so I created it. I created this group on Facebook. It's called the Safety and Security Source for Real Estate. That's where I report crimes that make the national news um, in the web, on the web, I'm sorry, on the Facebook page. That's where I share my articles. I share safety tips. And it's just a place for anyone and everyone interested in real estate safety to come gather, get information and share information. At the end, I am going to give you a link so that you can get everything that I talk about today. So if you um, are writing, you don't have to worry about writing it down or not. I am going to make sure you have the link. So when I had an education director tell me, Tracy, I'd love to hire you. I'd love for you to come in and talk to my agents about life-saving information about how to protect the consumer. She said, but it's just not good business. And I'm thinking, what? She said, the only time real estate agents show up for any kind of training is you have to teach them how to make more money. True? Right? Could be, maybe, maybe not. Anyway, so what I had to do is put on my thinking cap. It's like, how can I make real estate safety profitable? How can I get agents engaged other than the life-saving part of it? So I created the country's only real estate safety designation. And about 750 or so agents have earned it. And it's two CE classes where I talk not only about safety, but I'm talking about safe practices, handouts and tools, information to help you convince the consumer that you are the safety real estate agent to help you build your business. I'm going to try to highlight some of those topics today, but my sole focus today is artificial intelligence safety because that is truly what everyone's talking about. After a real estate agent was murdered, her family sued the real estate company for neglect. They said, had there been safety training, we believe she would be here today. So I had to create a class for brokers, managers, and owners how to set up safe practices for your office, for your brokerage. That includes the four walls. That's the equipment inside, the people inside, not just the agents. How to set up safe practices so that your agents know how to be safe, what to do, when to do it, and just give them some guidelines. And that class, I think I've had about 250 or so brokers complete it. So it's a certification class and it's a CE class. So as you can see, I'm always creating classes and content because there's no one else doing it. I have a question for you all, and today's going to be interactive, and I'm on with a bunch of salespeople, so I know there's not a shy person in the room. My question is, can someone unmute and tell me the risk of the job of a real estate agent? So just unmute and jump right in here. Tell me what are some of the risks that you think about on a daily basis. Getting locked in a property and attacked either physically, sexually, or taken for money. 
Okay, thank you, Shelby. Um, anyone else? I just need one more person to tell me a risk getting, involved in the job. Oh, go ahead. Getting sued for forgetting to say something or putting something incorrectly in an agreement of sale. Oh, good one, Jody. Jody, I don't know if I've heard anyone ever come up with that one, but excellent point. I mean, valid point. I had a real estate agent say that when she told her mom, she was like 25 or so years old, she told her mom she was going to be a real estate agent. She was going to go to school and get her license. Her mom said, no, you can't. It's like, why not? She said, because it's a dangerous job. So what I want to do is to make sure people are not afraid to be an agent. Um, I have a twin sister. She and I got our real estate licenses 35 years ago. She's still an agent now, and I decided to take a different path. So I know the job, and I don't want to discourage you from being an agent. I just want you to do so in a safe way. So your job description reads that you make a living meeting complete strangers in empty houses. You make a living sitting in empty houses waiting for strangers to walk in. How does that sound? And I always wait. I let the agent say that's crazy. I'm not going to say it, but what I'm but saying is there are way. That's crazy. <laughs> Thank you for <laughs> saying it, Jody. But my goal is to think of ways, and in my regular safe practices class, we discuss ways to remove the dangers, the showing, the open house, and all of those dangers. And um, so to remove the dangers from the job. Also, email. You can't do your business without email. I can't do my business without email. That is the way criminals access your information. That's the way they commit wire fraud. So we're going to talk about that today, which is a cybersecurity topic. And it's also an artificial intelligence topic. And I'm going to show you how. The US Department of Labor considers real estate sales and leasing a high risk hazardous occupation. So after hearing the job description, we're not surprised. What I keep hearing are stories about real estate safety being the wild, wild west. And that is my deep fake picture that I created on Mid Journey. And we'll talk about which tools you all are using. If you've been paying attention to national news, you will see that the real estate industry is at an inflection point. There are issues in our industry and um, they're being addressed. But when it comes to safety, I read a national article where it said there's no one offering safety training for agents. They don't require it for agents. Agents aren't taking it. You know, it's like the wild, wild west out there. So that's when I said, I've got to stop this. This is where I get to lend my voice and show that there is safety training available. It's just, it's yours for the taking. So again, um, kudos to Matt for having me here. When we talk about artificial intelligence, that truly is the wild, wild west because everyone's kind of doing their thing. No one knows who's doing what, how to do it. Are you doing it right? Who's doing it wrong? We don't know. My job is to stop that. One thing is before I go on forward is governance. No one's talking governance. What I'd like to know is who here and I'm going to see if I can put up the screen where I can see you all. Um, who here is using artificial generative artificial intelligence like Google, Bart, Bing? Um, can you raise your hand? I can't see. Does Ready? Chat How GPT count? Yeah, that's what I'm talking. Chat GPT, Google, Bart, Bing, those kind of tools, Midjourney, Canva. Who here is using them? And can you tell me, Brittany, I can't see everyone. But How many hands are up? Um, it looks like we have about, well, maybe two hands. So not not many. Not many. Okay. After today, that, that needs to change. And I will maybe tell that's you why. why. <laughs> right. But I, I will tell you. And so, people, so many people are uncertain. But what I keep encountering are people are saying, I'm scared. I'm scared of it. I don't know what it's going to do. So I'm just avoiding it. And that's not the, that's not the way to think about it. So hopefully today I will explain to you a different perspective. One of the basics in all of my safety classes is I tell you not to judge a book by its cover. That's even more important now in the age of artificial intelligence, deep fakes. And when we get to that part, you will understand why. I'm telling agents not to judge a book by its cover. And so often agents say, oh, I'm a good judge of character. I've been in this business forever. I can size someone up pretty good. You know, I can look them up and down and determine whether or not they're a good uh, fit, if they're about business or if they mean me harm. No. You cannot. I used to ask the question, tell me a physical characteristic of someone that you don't want to encounter 
while showing a house. Someone you don't want to pull up and get out of the car. A physical description of someone you don't want to walk into an open house. People were uncomfortable answering the question, so I decided to change it up a little bit. I'm going to ask a question. We're going to play a little game here. So let's say you are an upscale agent. You have luxury listings, and you are the agent who thinks that you can determine by looking someone up and down whether or not they can qualify for what you're selling. So luxury upscale agent, take a, pic a look at this picture. Look at this picture. If this fella pulls up in this pickup truck, to your upscale luxury listing interested in the house and you are judging that book by its cover let's see what would have happened anyone know who that is anyone recognize him just unmute and jump in there's always one or two people who do that is sam walton the founder of walmart one of the richest men in the world that is his truck that is how he dressed so when he went around town, he would pull up in that truck in front of your luxury listing, which of course he could buy probably many times over. If you judge that book by its cover, it would cost you business, right? Here's another picture. Anyone know who that is? And most people usually know for whatever reason. Can anyone Ted Bundy. tell us? Ted Bundy, thank you. Ted Bundy is a notorious, was a notorious serial killer. How do people describe Ted Bundy? And I see Jody's hands up. How do people describe Ted Bundy? It was up from the other thing about the oh. um, chat GPT and all that stuff. Canva. Oh, okay. Sorry. Okay, I missed that. No problem. Um, can anyone unmute and tell me Ted how Ted Bundy was no he was known to be attractive and well presented. Exactly, exactly, Shelby. He was charismatic, charming, a good looking guy. He used that to trap women. He would go to parking lot, grocery store parking lots, put on a fake cast or have a cane or a crutch, and he would ask for help. And that's how he targeted women. So if you judge that book by its cover, it would cost you your life. Don't do it. So you're saying, Tracy, how are we supposed to know if we're in danger, you know, if we can't look at them and size them up? I'm going to tell you, isn't she cute? No. This looks like someone's old um, yearbook picture. This could be someone's mom. All of those women are serial killers. And grandma up front, I think she killed six people. You cannot judge a book by its cover. Looks are deceiving. So what are you supposed to do? <clears throat> You're supposed to trust your gut. All of us are born with a built-in survival mechanism that is hardly ever wrong. Every animal in nature has it. Human beings are the only ones who ignore it. We call it instinct, intuition, gut, sixth sense, flight or flight. Some even call it spidey sense. So that is your body warning you that you are in danger. Your intuition, your gut's sole job is to warn you of danger. It has no agenda, no other purpose. So if you hear nothing else today, you must hear this. Listen to your gut. If you get that funny feeling in the pit of your stomach or your heart's beating fast, the hairs are standing up on your arms or the back of your neck, your body is warning you that you are in danger. Get out of the situation, make up an excuse, a story, whatever it takes. Now, let's talk a little bit about safety training, why I am here today. In our industry, we have a culture problem. Real estate agents are afraid to speak up. If something is wrong, they won't say it until it hits the national headlines. And again, you can, um, I'm going to be writing about this soon. So if you're on my Facebook group, you will see what I'm talking about, the article, the article about the culture of safety in the industry. Um, but my goal is that no one here needs to be safe. You don't have to feel like a victim. I empower you to do your jobs in a safe manner. I talk to leadership about creating a safety plan and supporting your agents, supporting you. Psychological safety says that you will speak up if something's wrong, if there's harassment or you see someone doing something dangerous or you don't feel safe, you will speak up to your manager, to your leadership, and you will not fear retribution, retaliation, or punishment. That's my new passion is creating a strong safety culture in one of my new training classes. So let's get into the cybercrime and AI. Cybercrime is a people problem. You cannot be a victim of cybercrime without your participation. That means you have to do something to be a victim. You have to click a link in an email to download 
a virus or malware, you have to um, download something, you have to respond to something. You are the sole reason that you would be ever be victimized. After today, not one person on here will be able to be victimized unknowingly because I'm going to tell you what to look out for and what you need to do. Your devices, your cell phone, your laptop won't automatically infect itself. It won't download viruses on its own. It needs you. So let's talk about ways to change that behavior. First and foremost, not only with artificial intelligence, but all internet activity, anything that you do online, you need to know that there's no such thing as privacy. That means your social media, I don't care what your settings are, anything that you put out there is not private. How many times have we seen those deleted screen posts, now deleted posts, and then we're looking at it on screen somewhere. No such thing as privacy, so understand that. The governance of artificial intelligence is what's missing, and again, that's a new class that I am doing. No one is telling the rules. No one's sharing the rules. If you're using ChatGPT, here's what you can do, here's what you can't do. This is especially important for leadership. That means associations and boards. That means real estate brokerages. You need to know how your people are using it. You need to disclose to your client if you're using these tools in your business and you're involving their information. Um, follow the FTC rules and those rules talk about exaggeration, um, misstating facts. And you also need to make sure you're following your ethics, your NAR ethics, which means that you have to be truthful and factual and you cannot misrepresent properties. When we talk about how these tools work, you'll understand why that's important because they're they're magic and they allow you to do almost anything and everything. Here's a question. We used to ask the question, will technology replace real estate agents? We don't ask that question anymore. Now we're asking, will artificial intelligence replace real estate agents? Um, what are your thoughts? Yes or no? Let me hear from someone who thinks, yes, one day we may be in danger. Anyone? Depending on the portion of our job, we might be in danger. I mean, ChatGPT gives some great descriptions, helps with advertising and so forth. Excellent point. So if you're on a team and you're responsible for writing job descriptions, then maybe, just maybe, it would replace you. Um, anyone say, no, absolutely not. There's no way artificial intelligence, whether it's ChatGPT, Bing, Bart, there's no way it's going to replace us. Who is that? Anyone want to unmute and jump in and say, no way? I see Janice shaking her head. You don't think it can, Janice, never, ever? I think if the price is right, anything can affect your job. <laughs> okay. Uh, excellent point, Shelby. And I've not heard anyone say that. So the question is, will AI replace real estate agents? For right now, you are safe. However, real estate agents who are using these tools will outproduce you and run circles around you. For that reason, everyone needs to get on board. So let's talk about ways to make sure that doesn't happen. I had an agent who said chat GPT can't look a client in the eye, can't shake their hand and smile at them. Meet Emeka. Emeka is a humanoid and artificial intelligence tool who was interviewed by a reporter, a news reporter, and it's on the videos online. So when you say that artificial intelligence can't look you in the eye and talk to you, be careful of what will happen in the future. So I'm going to say. So the robot, and there are other robots out there. As a matter of fact, Elon Musk, who is a, a founder of OpenAI, who created ChatGPT, he is working on a, a humanoid um, that will be able to perform a lot of tasks that humans do. As a matter of fact, I pulled up to a McDonald's in the drive-thru. I'm here in Kansas City. I don't know if they have them there. And then this weird voice took my order and I realized, wait a minute, that's an artificial intelligence tool. It took my order perfectly. I even made some changes. It got it perfectly. So think about that McDonald's owner who could not find an employee who turned to artificial intelligence. So I am saying, and Shelby made it an excellent point, it really just depends. So the question is, is AI a friend or a foe? It is a friend if you're familiar with it and you know how to use it. It is a foe if you're not familiar with it and it catches you off guard and you don't know how cyber criminals are using it. So that's what we're going to talk about today. I saw this quote from a um, real estate broker owner who said that 
according to his company, he said AI will become pivotal in the real estate landscape and being an early adopter is crucial to staying ahead in the field. That's what I want you all to do. Even though this all kicked off at the end of November in 2022, that's when ChatGPT came on scene and everyone pretty much started losing their mind. That's when they started realizing this is something that can impact the real estate industry in a big way. I want you all to be ahead. We're almost a year into it, but you still have time to be an early adopter. The White House is talking about artificial intelligence. Whenever the creators of artificial intelligence are going to Congress and saying, please, please put guardrails in place. Please help us keep this safe. Please help us create safe policies. This could be dangerous. Help us slow it down. Then you know that there could be a problem. That's why this training is so important. Here are some of the things that artificial intelligence can allow you to do. Write sales letters. So if you say, I'm not a writer, you are now. You can write sales letters. You can translate from one language to another. I'll show you that. You can write blog posts. You're always hearing people say content, content, content. Put it out there. You can do that. Uh, create social media campaigns. I'm going to show you how you can magically create a whole 30-day social media campaign with these tools. You can write video scripts. They're always telling you to do videos and co-author eBooks. I've written a couple. So it's important that you get on board for artificial intelligence, but let's do it in a safe way. Anything good can be used for bad. So I, I always have to look at everything from the point of how can this be a... Um, a problem in our industry and let me come up with a solution. So that's what I do. I happen, happen to have the opportunity to be on a stage in Chicago with the NAR Senior Council talking about artificial intelligence and some of the, the rules that you all need to understand so that you don't violate your ethics. You cannot copyright artificial intelligence. So you can create something wonderful, but you can't copyright it because there's still a gray area who created it. You gave the prompt, but artificial intelligence created it. She also wants to make sure that you protect personal information because once you enter it in the tool, it is out there for the entire world to see. So don't enter proprietary information, don't enter private information. A lot of times people think, oh, I don't need um, an attorney or a lawyer anymore because I can ask these tools to create a contract and it will. I can ask it to create um, a, a, a spreadsheet a financial document, and it will do that. What she is saying is you need to still keep your professional team in place. You can use artificial intelligence to supplement it, but it is not a substitute for those professionals that you rely on right now. One thing we're going to talk about is that artificial intelligence hallucinates. Another word is lie. It makes up facts, so you can't copy and paste anyway. Because if you do, we don't know about the plagiarism part of it yet. That has still yet to be determined. We're still, we're still early in. And if you copy and paste it, you could be accused of plagiarism because the information that you get that's produced from these tools comes from the internet. Everything on the internet, someone had to put it there. And these tools are learning from us. So when you enter a prompt and you ask it to do something, it's learning from what you do. And someone else is going to have access to that information. So you need to be careful. Always fact check and don't publish anything on artificial intelligence that you don't want the world to know. Um, she also says, here's the part that you need to really be focused on. Article two is that you shall avoid exaggeration and misrepresentation. Artificial intelligence will allow you to create something. You tell it the tone. You could say, I want you to write a blog post or a description of a property, write it in a bombastic, exciting tone, uh, really get descriptive, make it really, um, engaging. You need to be careful that you're not exaggerating facts and that you're not misrepresenting representing anything. Um, also, you need to be honest and truthful. Um, that means artificial intelligence can make up a story, can weave a wonderful story for you, but you need to make sure what it's saying is true. So that's how you stay out of trouble and keep your real estate license in place. Who here has heard about Rapitoni, the Rapitoni MLS situation? Anyone? I see one hand go up. I can't see all hands. Okay, um, is anyone here able to unmute and briefly summarize what, what I'm talking about? Let me summarize it for you. Rapitoni is an MLS company that had a cybersecurity breach. It had, I wanna say eight agents from eight states use that MLS. So they had a cybersecurity breach and their information was held 
for ransomware. So a cyber criminal was able to breach their account and stop everybody. Real estate agents in eight states or so could not access the MLS. They couldn't find out the status of properties. They couldn't find out anything. C clients, customers, no one could do anything. It got to the point while they were trying to figure it out where agents were having other agents in other cities and states access the internet, the MLS, to tell them whether or not properties were intact. So it was a cybersecurity nightmare. I was in... And I had to stop and think where I've been so many places this month. I was in Anaheim for their state convention and Rapatoni actually had a booth there. It's like, you actually showed up? Because of course people would be upset and angry, but they showed up. I said, based on what you went through, I said, what is the one thing you would share with the real estate industry that would help keep this from happening? He said to tell everyone to tighten up. That means tighten up your cybersecurity protocols. We're going to talk about them today. And another thing he said is invest in cybersecurity training. Again, kudos to your association leadership. That's what we're doing today. We're doing a, a short version of it. Of course, there's a whole big long program, but today is a step in the right direction. He said, invest in it upfront because if you don't, just like uh, Rapatoni, you're going to invest on the back end. So they not only are having to spend a lot of money, I think the ransom was 30 million and they were negotiating, but they still have to get their systems in place. So that the average cost is $4 million to do that. And then what about their reputation? Are people going to trust them anymore? So there are a lot of costs involved. The goal is to avoid the issues right up front. I have a saying, it's my theme, it's my motto. Pause, stop and think before you do anything online. In the, the case of Rapatoni, and I don't know if you all heard, M, M, was it MGM at Caesars Palace in Las Vegas had a cybersecurity breach too. And people couldn't check into hotel rooms. They couldn't make reservations because a cyber criminal decided to take over their information. So the crimes are out there. And you're thinking, little old me, they're, they're not even thinking about me if they're looking for big targets like that. Think about it this way. If a big target like that is vulnerable, what about you? So cyber criminals know that you and the real estate industry, just like um, the, the Colorado Bureau of Investigations agent said, the real estate industry, you're where the money is. You're where the transactions are occurring on a regular basis. So you're thinking I only do a little hundred or $200,000 uh, transactions, but think about what the, um, the wire, the down payment is or any earnest money deposits. $5,000 could be a big payday for a cyber criminal. And then in the real estate industry, most of us aren't even paying attention because we don't think it can happen to us. So it's easy pickings. My job is to stop that. So before you do anything, pause, stop and think. I was in Columbia, Missouri this week and I had an agent walk up to me before class. He showed me a piece of paper. He printed an email. The email says, um, dear PayPal customer, thank you for your payment of $1,200. We've gotten your payment of $1,200. And if you have any questions or problems, please call this number. That was a cyber criminal hoping that he would call the number and say, that is not my payment. I didn't make that payment. You're wrong. They would have said, okay, give me your PayPal account number or your bank account number and let us fix it. Except he was smart enough to pause, stop and think. He picked up the phone and called the real PayPal and found out it was a scam. In the cases of the cyber crimes that we talked about today, it could be one person in the whole big company in an office who clicked a link in an email and downloaded malware that caused that big problem. I don't want that to be you. So let's talk about artificial intelligence. Let's talk about deep fakes. Artificial intelligence is pretty much a tool, a machine that can do what the human brain can do, except do it faster and sometimes do it better. So if you're able to give instructions, like to um, if you have a team or you manage people or you have a family, you already know how to give instructions, directions, how to do something, how to get something done. So that means you can use any of these tools and it's called a prompt. You tell it what you want it to create and it's going to write or produce an image for you. I'm gonna show you some examples. So let's talk about how they're being used in the real estate industry first. You guys remember the grand grandparent scam? I remember this from when I was growing up. Um, someone would call a grandma or grandpa and say, hey, grandma, I'm in trouble. Can you please wire me money? Or I'm stuck in Mexico or I, I'm sick. Don't tell mom and dad. And it would work. They would wire money. It worked. So how is artificial intelligence amplifying that? I created grandma. That's my deep fake grandma. I created her with artificial intelligence. I don't remember which tool. 
So in the real and see how realistic that picture looks. So in the real estate industry, you all are familiar with the broker gift card scam. Almost everywhere I go, someone has heard this story. Your broker will text you and say, hey, I'm in a meeting. I need you to go buy a gift card. You know, call me back with the number. I need the number. I'm with an important client. Has anyone heard that? So many people have heard it. Think about how artificial intelligence is amplifying that. There are not only video deep fakes, which you've seen on TV, or picture deep fakes. There are voice deep fakes. We're all told to create content, get videos out there. What cyber criminals are doing is they're impersonating you. They're duplicating your voice. And you're saying, I don't have any content out there. Even if they call your answering machine, your voicemail, they can get your voice. The whole point is they're getting the voices and then they are synthesizing them and making them say things that you've never said. So imagine there was a, C, um, a criminal who targeted a company, a certain organization. Now, the, the executive was used to talking to a CEO all the time. So he got a phone call from a CEO, no big deal. The CEO said, hey, I need you to wire $243,000. Not a big deal. He did it because he always does it. And then he called back to confirm, hey, I did it. And he said, what are you talking about? He said, you called me and told me to wire it. He did not. It was an artificial intelligence voice. It was a deep fake voice. If you don't know better, you could fall for that scam. But now that we're talking about it, if you get a phone call from anyone, it could be a lender saying, hey, real estate agent, I need you to send me the bank statement for your client. I've somehow misplaced it. Make sure it's not redacted because I need to see the information. If you don't know better, you would automatically do it. But now I put the thought in your head that that could be a deep fake. You need to double check and make sure that it is a real request. One thing that I advise is that you create a standard operating procedure, and that's something that I've created for you. And this is an opportunity for you to lead with safety with the consumer. Here's how you stand out from the other agents. Everyone has heard of artificial intelligence. So whether you're using it or not, I guarantee you the clients, your consumers have heard about it. They don't know what to do with it. They don't know how it may impact them, but they've all heard about it. So all of a sudden here is their real estate agent who is saying, hey, I've had training on this and here's what you need to be careful for. If you get a phone call and it's it sounds like me asking you for information that it doesn't seem appropriate, here is a standard operating procedure. Here's my phone number, my real phone number. This is the number I want you to call me on. If you get a phone call or an email from a lender, here on this piece of paper is the only phone number and email address that you need to use to reach out to the lender. And then that way, if they get a phone call from someone pretending to be the lender saying, resend your bank statements, you put them on notice that this kind of crime exists. So you are serving your customer, your consumer. Red flags, or if there's a sense of urgency, hey, um, this is your broker. I need you to do that right now. We don't have time to talk to it now. I'll explain later. If they're asking for money or asking for information, then pause, stop, and think. And contact your broker on a known number to find out if that's accurate. Who can tell me another term, another name for digital impersonation? Just unmute and jump in and tell me another term for digital impersonation. social media impersonation, it's a deep fake. And we're going to talk about deep fakes today. The reason it is so important is that people, criminals impersonating people in the industry, real estate agents, or here's a story that was just last week or this week, the weeks blend in. A, cas a casino worker got a phone call from someone who said, I need you to bring cash drop it off at Circle K, drop off another bag of cash at a hotel, drop off another bag of cash here. She dropped off $1.2 million in cash at these different places. And it turns out he was a criminal. The question is, why? Someone said, why did you do it? You know, and she said, well, I, I thought it was weird, but I, I didn't have time. I just did it anyway, because I just thought I needed to do it. She didn't care about her industry. There was no compassion. No, let me double check that. She had no care. So the safety culture in that industry, not so good. And secondly, what we don't know, was it a voice impersonation of someone pretending to be her CEO or her boss as she recognized it and did it? Or was it just someone who simply called? So we need to be aware and alert that the, the criminals are coming after all of us. 
Um, they're writing the phishing emails. I'm going to show you how they're using um, artificial intelligence to do that. Now, there are tools that you can use to create so-called deep fakes or avatars. Has anyone here created an avatar um, with Synthesia, one of these tools? If you if you're in this industry, people are always telling you you need to make videos, you need to get out in front of people. Videos are where it's at, right? Some of you and so many people say, I don't like making videos. I hate going on camera. I don't like my face. I don't like my voice. So you can make a faceless video. These tools, Synthesia, are great for that. You can pick an avatar, pick a head. You can pick a voice. You can have an accent, no accent, male, female. You pick it and you create the tools. That's the good way to use them. Cyber criminals are using them to impersonate people. Google is your friend. Google has safety and security tools. Um, the Google Maps allows you to share your location so someone knows where you are at all times. If you lose your phone or your device, Google allows you to find your device. Um, you can do a street view of a property. If you question the property, you can get down and look street level, look all around. Um, you can share your Google Calendar. So you will understand why Google is a great tool for artificial intelligence and cybersecurity. Um, people talk about until AI kills someone, no one's going to pay attention. I know you all are familiar with Tesla. Tesla has a self-driving feature. There have been lawsuits where people have been killed. So artificial intelligence can be extremely dangerous. There is a, an artificial intelligence tool that we all have on our phone that I'm gonna show you how it can help you determine whether or not something is artificially created. Right now on your phone, if you see that microphone, that is how you can give it a voice command. If there's a, <clears throat> a song playing on the radio, that's where you click the button and it tells you who sings it. Let me tell you how magic artificial intelligence is. <clears throat> I heard a guy sitting on a stage with a guitar singing a song and I said, no way artificial intelligence, Google can't tell me who this is. Google was able to tell me who the song, who sang the song and the song from a live person sitting on the stage. That is astronomical. That's magic. The tools are powerful. You need to get on board if you're not on board. AI, um, Anthropic has created a tool called Claude. Microsoft has Bing, which is powered by ChatGPT. Most people are familiar with ChatGPT. BARD is a Google product and most every single agent already uses Canva. Canva has a an artificial intelligence two tools. So let's talk real quick about BARD. BARD allows you to access your Google Calendar, your Gmail. So right now they allow you to interact with all of the tools. So that is extremely powerful. Um, you can use it to schedule events. I, I don't have time to go into great detail, but it can save you time. So BARD is connected to the internet. Chat GPT for the most part is not. So I'm here in Kansas City. If I say who won the Super Bowl, ChatGPT couldn't tell me because its knowledge stops in 2021. If I go to BARD, which is connected to Google, it's going to be able to tell me that the Kansas City Chiefs won the Super Bowl, right? However, there have been some updates to ChatGPT, and now it looks like it's rolling out a connectivity to the internet. So it's going to be even more useful. So BARD is about to get powerful and make your lives a whole lot easier. You can use these tools to translate into a number of images. Let's talk a little bit about ChatGPT. First and foremost, you need to understand what you can and cannot put in these tools. If you are writing any information and asking for a report on your client, here's my client's name, here's their address, here are their financial data. Now create a report, a spreadsheet. That's public information. Don't do it. If you want your company data, you want to create a financial report or document and you're uploading your um, your minutes or your documents from your, uh, your financial documents from your brokerage or your team, public information, don't do it. So anything that you put in these tools, anyone can see and the tools are learning from it. So beware, be careful. You know that you can prompt them. In the voice of a real estate agent, you know, give me whatever, whatever tips. I'm the girl who says, ask for safety and security content. Give me, um, write an article about winter safety here in whatever city you're in, whatever town, state you're in. So you get the choice of making it create whatever you want it to create, and it will do that. I say, um, write an article about 
winter safety tips for cars, how to secure your home and winterize your home, how to uh, personal safety for when for shorter days, whatever you want it to be, you're always told to create content, no excuses anymore. Not only will it create the content that you asked for, it will write it perfectly and grammatically correct. So even if you're not a writer, these tools will write for you. Again, you can't just copy and paste. You have to tweak it, change the words, make it your own, no direct copy and pasting. And more importantly, you must fact check it because it's going to hallucinate. It could even make up stuff and it will convince you of what it's saying, even though it's not true. So fact check. Now you can um, ask it to create a social media calendar for you. One of the things that you need to do is you need to look at the 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 safety or the privacy or lack thereof policy for all of the tools. And they're pretty much going to tell you none of, none of this is uh, private. Anything you put here, we're going to share. Anything that you enter here is public information. So be familiar with that, but understand. Another thing that you need to know is that cyber criminals are pretending to be these tools and creating apps that you download, which is downloading malware and viruses onto your computer. They're saying, you know, this is the paid version. So we expect to pay um, $20 for the upgraded version of ChatGPT. So they're saying, here's an app, download it onto your device and then pay us. So what you're doing is you're downloading a virus and you're paying a cyber criminal. So what you need to know is that you have to check the reviews. If you see something that looks like a tool, check the reviews. That's where you're going to find out whether or not it is. Um, understand that the tools will do whatever you ask them to do. You can ask them for definitions. You can ask them to create content. Content, it's going to do that. How many here use Canva? Probably almost everyone. It's kind of the, the go-to in the real estate industry. Canva is powered by ChatGPT. So Canva will allow you to use Magic Write and you can ask it to do something and it will produce content. So that's a tool Canva has, I want to say 13 to 18 artificial intelligence tools. Too many to go through here, but I wanted to highlight some of them for you. Cyber criminals are using these tools to write emails that typically were poorly written and you can see all the grammatical errors. So if you get these emails, you dismiss them because they're not well written, although they still work. So they were writing these horribly obvious emails. Now they're using these exact same tools and they're writing these emails well. So you have to look and you have to double check it. You can use these tools to write a book. I say, don't plagiarize, don't copy and paste it directly. You can ask it to write an outline and then you fill in the information. You can use these tools to copy edit or to spell check. If you use Grammarly, you're already using artificial intelligence tools. So the tools are there for you. Now this one is Claude. Claude can read a PDF. So I had a document and it's like, I can't read this. You know, I uploaded it and I said, will you summarize this for me? The other tools can do this as well. So what you can do is you can take a book, a booklet, you can take a whole big thick document and upload it and it will summarize. I said, summarize it in bullet point and it's going to do that. It saves you time. One thing you need to understand is whatever you upload, it's not private. So if you have your company's financials and you want a summary of it, it will do that. But understand that it's not private. So the world can see your company's financials. If it's medical information, I had someone who uploaded their health insurance policy and said, you know, I have this medical condition. Is it covered? It'll answer it, but everybody else in the world is going to know. So understand the tools and you still have to fact check it. Um, <clears throat> Bing is on Microsoft. If you have the Edge browser, you can um, access it that way. It will produce content as well as images and it's powered by ChatGPT. So you can use that for anything. So let me show you. We'll do a little show and tell here. We've got about 15 minutes left. Let's do some show and tell. I said, you know, I want you to create a real estate agent showing a house to two people. Look at the picture of the real estate agent with a house in their hand showing it to two people. So the power is in the prompt. It depends on how you ask the question, what the content's going to be. So there are classes you can take that tells you how to prompt for the right results. So you can ask the question again, like try it again, but this time, you know, put them in a house with the real estate agent standing with them, showing them a picture of the house. So you have to practice and you have to work on it. I encourage all of you to log into these uh, device, these tools, find out which one's best for you. Just play around with it until you get comfortable. I don't want you to be left behind because everybody's going to be using it in the industry. So don't be that flip phone agent, you know, still trying to catch up. 
get on board now. <clears throat> there are ways cyber criminals can use the information. So let's talk about how they're using it to create fraud in the industry. We already use artificial intelligence. If you like virtual tours, that's the artificial intelligence. The 360 degree photos, 3D photos, those are artificial intelligence. So let's talk about how cyber criminals are using it. <clears throat> you can say, write a report for my client, give all the details, and it's going to write the report. Cyber criminals can say, write a letter convincing the reader to click on a link to download it. So it writes a perfectly scripted letter, and you see that link right there? That's where they will embed malware. So the letter's pretty convincing. It looks interesting. They click that link, they download malware onto their computer. Now all of your information is in jeopardy. Artificial intelligence can translate if you want to reach a larger market. Um, it can translate from English to other languages and back and forth and almost every single language out there. So you can become a multilingual real estate agent. Keep in mind the cyber criminals can now victimize those who don't speak English. So if you have um, a segment of your population that speaks another language, be the real estate agent that goes to them and say, hey, this is something you need to watch out for. Um, the cyber criminals were probably coming for you because you don't know what's going on out here. So be the agent who serves that community. And again, you can use the tools to translate. <clears throat> you can ask ChatGPT to put anything in another language. You can do that Tracy. whatever language you choose. Yes. I just used ChatGPT when I went to um, Club Med. Half their employees uh -huh. speak different languages. They take them from wherever they can. The one we went to is 20 different languages. So ChatGPT uh -huh. was able to give me the recipes of ingredients I wanted for things and then translate it to them. And everybody made everything perfect. See what I'm saying? So thank you, Shelby. This is magical. So anyone who's not using it, I know you'll agree they're missing out. So this is real. It's coming. The cyber criminals can target those communities who don't know. So I want you all to serve those communities. If there's a community that doesn't speak English, go into that community, create content and say, here's what you need to watch out for. You can now become the multilingual real estate agent. Always fact check it though. Make sure that what you think it says, it says. So you can copy and paste it into Google Translate and make sure that that other language is really saying what it needs to say. Um, I love if I read something online, all of a sudden, I can translate it so I can be nosy and do so effectively. Let's talk a little bit about deep fakes. Deep fakes is when you take a face and put it on someone else's body, you make it say and do things that they never said or did. Um, so it's a simple, there's software out there that will do this. You can do it when you don't want to create a video, but you want to face this video, you can do it. But the problem is, so can cyber criminals. So let's talk about what you need to watch out for. Here's how I knew that it was dangerous. Um, first of all, it could pretend to be you. If you have someone in the business, a competitor, they can imitate your voice or they can do a deep fake of your face, make you say and do things that you've never said or done. They can imitate a lender and come to you and again, ask for information. If you do virtual uh, videos with your clients or a Zoom or conversation with your clients, they can do a deep fake video and your client, and you can advise you or a deep fake version if you can advise your client, you know, we need to sell your house for dirt, dirt cheap um, because the market is really crazy and your client will believe you and then list it low. There are so many things that can happen, so many ways this can go wrong in the community, in the real estate community, unless you are educated and unless you educate your clients that this is possible. So let me show you this deep fake and I'm looking at the clock. Um, there are famous deep fakes you probably have seen, Keanu Reeves, Carrie Fisher. Um, deep fakes in the real estate world can be scary. And I know there will be headlines at some point of these crimes happening, but hopefully not to anyone I've talked to. So this is how I knew it was serious. There was a video out on YouTube of Queen Elizabeth sitting at a desk. Queen Elizabeth is getting up. She is dancing. And it's like, wait a minute. What am I looking at? This is not real. So then I went back. The lady on the bottom left did a deep fake of Queen Elizabeth. She put Queen Elizabeth's face on her face and she made her do things Queen Elizabeth has never done. You can see what is going to eventually happen in this industry. The Pentagon had an explosion, so we thought. The news reported it. It was a deep fake. This is one that shows the dangers of it all. There's a video that shows a uh, Ukrainian president telling the uh, soldiers to lay down their weapons that the war is over. It was a deep fake. You can see the dangers of it. So it's important to know that these tools exist. 
you can use them. Reface is a tool, but always check the reviews to see what people have to say. Is it a legitimate, um, do they have privacy concerns? So do your homework. Synthesia is a great tool that you all can use. If you want to create a video, but you don't want your face in it, cyber criminals are using these videos. Uh, Revoicer is a deep fake voice impersonation. If you don't like your voice, change it. Make it a male voice, female voice, an accent. You can do whatever you want to do legitimately, but understand that cyber criminals are using these tools too. Now take a look at these faces. Typically you're thinking, you know, these are stock pictures Tracy got from somewhere, uh, models somewhere, just regular people pictures. What if I told you that these people don't exist anywhere, not on the face of the earth? These people are artificially intelligence created. They're not real people. These are not stock photos. They don't exist. I had someone say, now I'll never do online dating. Because if you thought catfishing was real before, imagine it now that cyber criminals have these tools and they can create realistic photos. So you can also prompt the text to image. I use Canva to create a picture. Canva has an AI tool called Magic Erase. I erase the plant. What's magic about it? The baseboard is still intact. Look, it looks like the plant was just removed. You can use these tools in a legitimate way. That means that if your clients have a junky house and they have like laundry all over the place, you can erase the laundry. What you need to be careful of is that you don't erase anything material to the property. You can't erase, lice, erase light fixtures. You can't fix, fix things like that cracked window. You could erase it and fix it. You can't do that. So you need to know the rules. Imagine what cyber criminals can do with these tools. Imagine how they can remove defects in a property. So if you're looking at a listing or a client's looking at a listing picture, it may not be what's accurately uh, depicted. So you need to be the lead on this. You need to have the conversation with them that you can no longer believe what you see, what you hear, or what you read. Just like you can remove things, you can put things in. Cyber criminals can add features to a property. I saw this how this um, picture on Facebook in a group and everyone was talking about how chunky it was, how horrible, why would you put that in the MLS? Why would you post it? I went to Canvas Magic Erase and I erased the clutter off the cabinet. So that is something that you can do as long as it doesn't change any material parts of the property. Um, you don't erase an oven or um, outlet or anything like that. So you can use the tools in a good way, but be alert and aware of how cyber criminals are using them. I'm going to show you some pictures. And in your mind, we don't have time to go through them all. We've got five minutes, so I'm going to try not to talk too, too fast, but I want to get through this. And I'm, I always ask real or deep fake. So look at this picture. It is a deep fake picture that I created on camp, but that room does not exist. This picture, a deep fake. This picture, a deep fake. Oftentimes you can't look at it and tell, although I wonder why there's a plant on the sofa, but that's neither here nor there. But these pictures, cyber criminals can create these pictures. Imagine them, um, the Craigslist scams. It typically, they would typically jack your real listings and put their name and their information on it. Now they don't need your listing. They can create a whole entire property. They can uh, create an Airbnb picture, a listing. And then they can tell the consumer, contact me off the app so I can save you money. Do you see how this can be dangerous? They can create whole properties and the pictures and the consumer who unknowingly is wiring money for a deposit on that perfect, beautiful house that does not exist. That's where you come in. That's why you need to know about these tools and you need to have conversations with the consumer. Dali is ChatGPT's sister. You can create images just like that. Give it a description. It will make pictures. So you all never have to use stock pictures again. You can create your own. However, there are sometimes clues. When you look at deep fake pictures, they have an artificial intelligence, can't get the hands right. Sometimes there are not enough fingers, sometimes too many fingers, sometimes no fingers, sometimes no hands. So that's a tell, you can look. Although at some point they're eventually going to get it right, but that's one way to tell if a picture is real. Um, what do you notice there? She's got an extra right arm, right? So you have to look at the pictures. It, it, it doesn't know better. So you have to look at pictures up close to understand what is real and not. And that's not often enough. This is a deep fake that I created with Canva. All of these people are deep fakes. So imagine that social media page, the Facebook page. Now they usually, they would take stock photos and then just create a Facebook page and then reach out to you and try to befriend you. Imagine how realistic the pictures can be. So now you need to question 
everything. And those pages used to have no content. So you would look at it, the picture would be a stock picture and there was no information. Cyber criminals can use these tools and create content and post it on the page. So now you need to be extra careful. You need to warn the consumer to be extra careful. When you are writing descriptions, it's going to write a beautiful description, but you may ver violate fair housing laws. This one says you and your family can't do it. Further down, it says take a walk along the chore. Can't do it, right? So that's why you need to pay attention to the content that is created. Make sure you're not violating fair housing or any ethics rule. Looking at the clock, um, let's say you see a picture of a house. Someone says, I want to list my house. I told Dally to create some mansions. And I picked these two that they created. So you're saying as a real estate agent, how do I know these houses are real? How does the consumer know these houses are real? Google Lens is your friend. Google Lens is artificial intelligence. I uploaded this artificially created deep fake and Google Lens cannot, cannot find a match for it. I uploaded this one. Google Lens cannot find a match. So that's clue number one. This is not a real property. This is a real property. Google Lens found it and found the neighborhood. Most houses have been on the market at some point. So Google Lens was able to find it. Another real house, Google Lens found it. Um, so Google will help you. Uh, you can use the street view. And um, someone says, come list my property. And by now, right now, after today, you're going to question everything you see, what you read and what you hear, which is okay. But you need to use the tools. Don't be paranoid. Use the tools. Do some research. Is that house real? Let me go to Google Maps. Let me do a street view. Let me look around. So Google Lens is your friend. I saw a lady in uh, one of my classes in a class last week with this shirt on. It's like, I like that shirt. I put it in Google Lens. Google Lens told me where to buy the shirt. If you see a plant and you want to identify what type of plant, take a picture. Google Lens will tell you. It's a magical AI tool. Um, you need to be careful that cyber criminals can do impersonate you out there online, make announcements, and they can try to blackmail you. I'm going to release this video of you saying something. So be on top of it. Be alert and aware. I use uh, Google Lens to find out um, if the picture is real. This is a real picture. And it's like, Google Lens, tell me if this is a real person. She's a hair model. It found it. So Google Lens will help you determine whether or not something is real. Um, I have got a few minutes left. I want to just go through. Here's the important part. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to be the agent who right now is talking to your buyers and sellers and saying, look, these tools are out here. Cyber criminals are out here. I want to educate you. If you question anything, come to me and let me be your resource telling you if it's a deep fake or if it's real. I want you to be the agent that says that this technology is out here. And they're coming for this real estate industry, but my job is to protect you, the consumer. And I've been trained. Let me do that. Teach them how to verify information or you verify it for them. Use that standard operating procedure in order to show them this is the real contact information. Don't answer anything in an email or phone call. Here's the real phone numbers that you need to call. So be that agent. Uh, we talked about Google Translation technology. Um, you have maps on your phone. Most of you use it. If you get lost or if your phone is lost, Google Maps is tracking your location. It will draw a map of where you've been and give you a timeline and travel time of everywhere that you have been. You need to use that in case you lose a phone, but use it also to keep up with yourself, to let someone know your location. Um, Google Maps um, allows you to share your location. You can tell someone, I'm going to be showing from three to four this afternoon. You have access to my location while I'm showing, or you can just set it on 365 days of the year. Someone can always check in and see your real location. Uh, Google is adding features to the maps that will, uh, at some point, just like they tell you there's a, a speed trap ahead, it will let you know if there's a dangerous situation ahead. Um, I am going to wind up, um, Brittany, I'm winding it up here. Um, everyone know that wire fraud is a big deal of the industry. You need to have a signature on your email that tells the clients that do not fall for any scam. I saw this email signature, although the National Association of Realtors has a template that you can copy and paste. If you Google it on the uh, NAR uh, .realtor website, find the wire fraud instruction template, copy and paste it on every email. The lesson learned from ML, MGM, Caesar, Rapatoni is you need to back up your information. If you get hacked, if the, the criminal holds on to your information and you can't get it back without paying some large amount, you're out of business. If you back it up on a tool like Carbonite, your information is safe on the cloud so you can continue with your business. 
um, you need to make sure you update your software. If it says time to update, instead of pushing remind me or maybe later, do it right then and there because they have said there is a cybersecurity problem here and we want you to have the security patch updated and schedule regular updates. Um, hack proof your phone, have a password, have a pin, or have an AI thumbprint or face print that no one can get into your phone and access your client doc data. Make it hard. Do you all have forewarned, Brittany? No, we don't. Okay. Okay. For those of you who don't have it, um, associations get it. Sometimes companies get it for their clients or agents can buy it individually. Forewarn is a tool that you can use. You put in a phone number or an email address of your the client that you're going to meet with. It's going to give you any criminal convictions that they have. Keep in mind that criminals commit crimes maybe 11 times before they're convicted. So it's not a, a, a complete solution, but it will verify that that's a real phone or if it's a burner temporary throwaway phone so you can make a decision. It's going to verify their identity. Is this a real person or not? Which is especially important with the deep fakes out there. And it's going to give you a financial update. Um, is this person uh, bankrupt? Have they had any foreclosures? So you can make a decision for one's a great tool. Uh, you need to make sure you enable two-step authentication. That means if you're signing in on um, text message, it will say, I'm going to send you a security code by email. So you have to go to email. Or if you're signing in on email, you have to get the code on your text messages. So it's two places that you have to check in to make sure it's really you. Cyber criminals don't have access to it. So that is a way to stay safe. I have used this antivirus, a free antivirus program that an IT professional says is a good one. So I use it. I have not had a virus. So that is a free one. Of course, you can pay for updated services, but the free one works just as well on all devices. No more free emails. The free emails are easy to be hacked. You must use your company's domain email because those are less likely. So if they see a real estate company name after your email, criminals know those are probably harder to hack because of security protocols. No passwords, but passphrases. Passphrases could be two unrelated words. It could be green sky, purple tree, something that cyber criminals can not guess. And passwords, that's probably the number one way that cyber crime occurs. Don't be the agent who lets that happen on your watch. If you have LastPass, they were hacked, I'd say no. Use your browser. If you have Chrome browser, it will store your passwords. Those are pretty safe. Um, Social media, now that there's artificial intelligence, you can't believe what you see. You don't know who, if a person is real or not. That's why you need to do your homework, do your research, and find out if they're real. Um, understand that um, education is the key. So what we're doing today is excellent. This is duplicate slides, and I'm going to get to the end here um, so that I can show you. Um, if you get a, a, a free um, apps, free downloads, we all love free when it's free you are the product. So all of these free things are asking you to give up permission to access your camera, your microphone. So if they're listening in, it's not a conspiracy because you've given them permission to do so. So beware of free apps. Look at the um, settings. We already talked about software security. There are no tools right now that can tell you if something is artificially created. So you have to do your own research. Um, the detectors are out there. They're new technology, but they just don't work yet. So do your research. Um, Grammarly is a um, tool that you will probably already use for fact checking and grammar checking. It also can help with plagiarism, but of course, no such tool. That's the ransomware situation with Rapitoni. You don't want to be there. Um, I don't want to give you so many warnings where you're saying in one ear and out the other. That's why I tried to make it easy for you. Um, use safety to grow your business. I'm giving you a link to these tools of a seller security checklist when you're on a listing appointment. Use this to make sure the seller's house is safe and that's going to help set you apart from all the other listing agents. FISBO, this is the sheet that I give away thousands of copies. When you download the link I'm about to give you, staple your business card to this and give this to FISBOs who don't respect the work you do. Anyway, but it's telling them the safety tips that I teach you all in my regular classes about not showing alone, don't let strangers in your house, get your valuables out of sight. They never thought about it. So I'm giving you that sheet. Here is the free book that I am giving you all today. Chat GPT and I co-wrote it. Um, so download that book about cybersecurity risk. Share it with those in your office to help keep them safe. I use Bing to create a coloring book for my grandchildren. So you can use these tools to do anything. There is the podcast, the Drive with NAR, the Safety Series podcast. 
um, that I host with NAR on the third Monday of every month. We have about three episodes out there. Safety month, we're talking about, um, uh, oh gosh, what is it? Um, prevention, disaster preparedness. And that's a safety tool. Real estate agents need to know how to guide their clients in that environment. Those are some of the articles that I've written about artificial intelligence and cybersecurity, making me one of the loudest voices on the topic. Um, again, tune into the podcast. Here's your homework. Every single one of you need to go to the haveibeenpwned.com website. Put your email address in there. You're going to get a list of websites that you have visited that have had security compromises. Canvas, Salesforce, even my county website. And they're going to say your password on these websites have been exposed to cyber criminals on the dark web. Immediately change them and immediately change them. That's something you can reach out to your clients. You know, you're not selling them anything, but hey, I learned about this great tool. I want to make sure you're safe. Have I been pwned? Um, and it's going to tell you here are all the accounts that have had security password breaches. It's going to prompt you to change the password. Take it seriously. Here is my contact information. I'm going to give you a QR code neck, but if you're not good with QR codes, you might want to grab this and you can email me and say, Tracy, send me the link, or you can look at the chat. Um, and I think Brittany put it there. Click on that link on the chat, or you can get it here for the book that I wrote for you, the FISBO safety tip sheet, everything that we talked about, you can get it from the chat section. Does That's anyone awesome. have any questions um, or any comments about today's conversation? All right. Um, thank you so much, Tracy. Um, again, I'm not saying the you... I'm not saying the book in the chat. It's just if I scan this, that's the only way. No, no. Look in the chat. You'll see a link tree link. Click on that link. Scroll down, and it the first option. You give me your uh, email so I can send it to you. The first box says the FISBO safety tip sheet and the cybersecurity book. You download the PDFs immediately from there. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you all. All right, everyone. Thank you so much, Tracy, thank for you. joining us today. And um, we really appreciate all the information. Again, if anyone has any questions or comments about today's session, um, you know, please feel free to reach out to Tracy. Uh, this will be posted to our YouTube channel. And um, stay safe out there, everyone. Stop talking like that. Stop.